Hello. Um, this um, afternoon, I would like to um, talk to y'all about the marriage supper. Okay. Um, now, there's two uh, stories um, relating to the marriage supper in the um, in Matthew 22. Um, we can see that the great king had a supper for his son. So I would like to read uh, read this to you because um, we kind of skip over this stuff and forget about it. And, and I guess I have too, but but um, I have taught on it, I think, before. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, the, um, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and are in parentheses, and all things are, and are in parentheses again, are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it. In other words, they mocked him. They mocked him. And went their ways, and one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. And them is in parentheses. Okay, and when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. And he sent forth his armies to destroy those murderers and burn up their city. Does that sound familiar, y'all? California right now is experiencing uh, terrible fires and has been since, um, I believe it was um, August the 27th, if I'm not mistaken. I may be wrong. But um, they've been experiencing wildfires in California. Okay, and then verse 8 says, Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. In other words, those that were invited, they're not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as you find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out to the highways and gathered together all as many as they found both, and I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that this is in there, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. So that, y'all, that means there's hope for me. Bad and good, okay? <laughs> so anyway, and when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there was a man, there a man, which had not on a wedding garment, okay? We all know the wedding garment is the blood of Jesus. That's the robe. That's a robe of righteousness. And that was, that's only, um, you can only get that when you repent, okay? And he saith unto the, him, okay, now this is very important, y'all. It says, friend. He called him friend. So he wasn't a lost man, or he couldn't have called him friend. And he just didn't recently get saved, because if he recently got saved, he would repent it. And that's the only way that we can have on a wedding garment of, of, of righteousness if we repent for our sins daily. Okay. Then, um, and he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou into hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Now this man was saved. Now the wedding garment is Jesus, and Jesus is faith. Okay. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay, this is amazing, y'all. This is like... This is very powerful. I've never really um, thought about that. But God called this man friend. Okay? Now I want to go to Luke 14. And I want to read you this one. It's the same story, but in just a little bit different, um, um, deeper detail. Okay? Then said unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many. He invited everybody. Nobody was left without an invitation. And he sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they, with all one consent, and consent is in parentheses, began to make excuse. The first one said unto him, Hey, oh no, not hey, I have bought a, a piece of ground, and I must need to go and see it. I pray thee, have me excuse. In other words, Coming to the marriage supper was 
um, not that important to him. He wanted to he wanted to make sure that he checked on his ground and and his material things were more important to him. And another one said, "I have brought five. I have bought five yoke of oxen, and oxen, and I go to prove them. In other words, test them. And I pray thee, have me excused." So his um, his animals were real more important um, than um, than coming to the marriage supper. And another said, "I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come." So this this man. Um, that married a wife followed his wife and didn't follow Jesus. So that the servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor, the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Okay, so so we, we have to realize that the marriage supper is on earth. And uh, it's, it's a physical location, or the servants couldn't have told the, the uh, guest where to come. So, um, so this scripture in Matthew twenty two twelve um, is not about um, a, a, a lost. It's not about a lost person like we have assumed in the past. The Lord was telling us that um, that uh, this was a friend of His. Okay, so what this is saying is, without repentance, there's no salvation. The blood only covers us when we judge ourselves. First Corinthians. 11.31 says, For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. And so we can ask ourselves, what is judging ourselves? Repentance and confessing our sins. It's a daily thing. Righteousness is the robe of Jesus, which covers us when we humble ourselves to repent. The great king told the guest he needed the robe to enter into the marriage supper. The man had not repented of his sins. He was naked and ashamed. Throughout the Bible, it tells you, do not be found naked and ashamed. He was naked because he was trying to clothe himself like Adam and Eve tried to clothe themselves. And um, they had excuses for their sin. Um, and they did not repent. The man could not have been God's friend if he had been present at the location. The, um, the man could have not been, um, um, been uh, God's friend if he had not had been present at the location that God chose. John 15, 14 says, Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command. This man was in obedience. He hadn't, uh, recently, he hadn't recently been saved, or he would have repented for his sins to get saved. So we can ask ourselves, why did he not have the blood of Jesus on him to cover his sins? He hadn't repented of his sins to stand before the king. He had no fear of God. Okay, Romans 3, 18 says, There is no fear of God before their eyes. The man had pride in him and did not humble himself to receive the robe of righteousness, which is Jesus. God called this man friend, not a servant. John 15, 15 says, Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friend. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. The end of the test had come. The door of, to the Holy of Holies was about to be opened. The man had failed to see the holiness of God. He did not realize he had sin. We all have to repent daily of unknown and known sins. We, if we deliberately sin, that's a scary place to be with God because that's why Jesus came is, and to, to uh, help us uh, overcome sins that we didn't realize that we were committing. Jesus told us in Luke eleven four, Forgive us our sins. This is daily repentance. When the Bible speaks of judgment, it's talking about examining ourselves and getting right with God so that we can have faith to fill our temples, which is gone from heaven, who is Jesus. The presence of faith or Jesus is his blood covering us. 
A clearer description of judgment is given when we examine what Jesus said to the Pharisees. Luke 11, 42. But woe unto you, Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue over all manner of herbs and pass over judgment. In other words, they didn't examine themselves. And the love of God, they, they didn't have the love of God in them. They didn't love their brothers and sisters. These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. Okay, I'm going to read that one more time to you. Uh, Luke 11, 42. But woe unto you Pharisees, for ye tithe mint and rule, rue and all manner of herbs and pass over judgment and the love of God. These ought ye have done and not to leave the other undone. The Pharisees did not repent. They passed over judgment. They did not examine the hearts to see if they were in faith. The love of God, who is Jesus, is faith. They had quenched the light. They had not, they had not faith. So they had no robe to cover them. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God, of a living God. 1 Corinthians 11.31 For if we, we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Okay, what is judging ourselves? Repentance is judging ourselves. We sin and we don't realize what sin is. This is why the Holy Spirit came to, to tell us uh, what, we, what we're doing and, and convict us of our sins. He is the voice of God. Leviticus 5.15 tells us that some sins are unknown and some sins are deliberate. So, and this quenches the faith and keeps us from being filled with the presence of God, which is gold or faith. Um, Jesus is our daily bread. This is a daily thing. Repentance is a daily thing. Um, Luke eleven three says, "Give us our day, give us day by day our daily bread." Repentance fills us with food from heaven when we truly are sorry for our sins. So, I hope. That you'll you'll read this verse. It's Matthew twenty two twelve. The great King, uh, which is God, um, had the marriage supper on earth in Zion. It doesn't say Zion in there, but you can go to the Old Testament. You can find out um, uh, where it says. Um, and I think it's Jeremiah fifty verse five. Let me read it to you right quick. Um, Jeremiah fifty verse five. Uh, they shall ask their way to Zion with their faces thitherward, saying, Come, and let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. Okay, God is wanting to make a covenant with us. He can't make a covenant with us if we don't have the blood of Jesus on us and we haven't repented of our sins. So that's a scary place to be. We better repent daily. Well, I hope that this teaching helps y'all. Y'all be blessed. Thank you.